Tyler has it down to an exact science. All right, go ahead. I, I got call. I got a flash. I got him. 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. So Such different. cool boats. Oh, I yeah, love I, the Northeast boats. I love them, too. I think these things, for what I do at home, would be killer. Oh, anywhere. Hey, guys. Hey, how's it going, Tyler? Good. Nice to meet you, man. Tyler, owner and captain of the Cynthia Sea Harpoon Boat. Thanks for having us out. We're stoked to check out your fishery here. Beautiful. Up here in the Northeast, and particularly the Cape Cod area, this is a fishing culture, both commercial and sport, with very, very deep roots. Awesome boat, man. What kind of boat is this it? It's a 38 Holland, a custom Holland? built, yeah. This is built up here locally? Yeah, it was built up in Belfast, Maine. All of the culture, all the flavor, all the awesome scenery aside, we're here on a mission, and our mission is to learn more about a couple of species, you know, that this area is known for. How long you been in this fishery? I've been since, I've been fishing since 85. I was 17 when I harpooned my first fish. I've caught plenty of bluefin tuna in a lot of different places. I've caught the biggest in PEI. I've caught some of the smallest at home. But there's one technique that I have not experienced, and that is that Northeast harpoon fishery. There is no bycatch. This, the, this is the cleanest fishery there is. The harpoon fishery is extremely intriguing to me. Uh, I grew up in a background in the Keys of spearfishing. This is the shooting, we call it the shooting line. This is the first 125 feet of the rig. The rig consists of this, the shooting line, and then 500 feet of pot warp or lobster warp, 3 8 inch. One thing I really enjoy doing is picking other fishermen's brains, especially fishermen like Tyler. The harpoon's 12 feet long, and it's got a weighted end made of brass. The dart will come off completely free. The, the harpoon will slide up the line. Those fish show usually after 1 o'clock. Oh, okay. So you, that's why you need really nice conditions into the afternoon. Especially, and yeah. then, you know, like fisherman to fisherman, the book opens up. Next thing you know, he's showing us sort of the tricks of the trade. And this is why I rig like this. And this is why I have this rope custom made with wire going through it. I lean in, so if you can think about it, I'm leaning in, the belly rail's hitting me right about my hips. So I'm leaning forward, I got one, I'm like this. But you got your feet staggered like this, right? Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm like this. This Yo. would be so hard. This stick boat fishery is really very similar to the California historic sword fishery that we have there with the harpoon. Coming into a fish, you've got two guys in the tower. One guy comes down the tower, walks the plank. Now you've got a wheel man and you've got a harpoon man. Is you gotta have ice running through your veins. You're standing over a $5,000, $10,000 bill and you gotta put that harpoon on the mark, on a moving target, from a plank, on a moving boat. Just think about that. That is not an easy thing to do. I always say, you know, you can learn a lot more from a pro in a couple of days of fishing with them than you could ever figure out in years of doing it yourself. And Tyler is a pro, and this is his fishery, and he really has it wired. Harpooning is the most selective fishery of all the commercial fisheries. One, you're targeting one animal. There's no hooks involved, so you don't. You know, it's not a mystery of what you're going after or what bit the hook. It's you're going after a specific animal. I look at harpooning tuna fish very much like I look at deer hunting, to be honest. It's, a, it's almost identical. Tyler has it down to an exact science where he's harvesting that one fish at a time. We, uh, we see him up running. Mike will take control of the wheel and I'll get down the front end, the pulpit. See if we can't sneak up close enough to one and take a shot with the harpoon. We'll have the plane up about 10 o'clock or so, start helping us out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, climb back up. What do you think about it right in here? Does it look all right? It's good looking conditions? The plane serves multiple you know, serve purposes. Number one, it can scout areas real quick, looking for tuna fish, obviously. Basically, it's, if you think about it, it's just an 800-foot tower. Bluefin is kind of a unique tuna. One of the most interesting things about the bluefin, in my mind, is the distances they travel, why they travel, where they travel, the sizes they grow to in certain areas. You know, our average fish is 30 pounds, but that average fish in PEI is 700 pounds. 
That fish in the Gulf might be 500 pounds. It's just a, a unique species that occurs really in every shape and size you can imagine. And they get caught in almost every corner of the world. It's probably one of the most notorious fish for a lot of reasons. Yeah, I see him. Look at him right under us. Got him right there. You know what those are, right? Those were 50 pound stripers. Yeah, they look like tuna. There's tuna in here. Dougie's, Dougie saw them. There's tuna in here. You know, going into this, I had a feeling going to be a lot of riding around, a lot of waiting. But when it was time to go, it's time to go. How far? You got him? I got him. I got him. I got him. I got him. Right there, I 11 o'clock. Tyler, to me, is the best at what he does. There's a reason there's only one person who gets out on that pulpit when it's go time. I got, I got residge right here. They were right here. Let them square up, Mike. Let them get up for a second. It's a skill, and it's not a skill that you build overnight. This is honed over years and years of experience. So what happened there, Tyler? Were they just porpoising up and down, or? No, they were, they were up, just up on the surface. They were only picking a direction they were. We had spent about six or seven hours on the boat. We had a lot of opportunities. The plane had spotted spots of fish. You know, we had a couple false alarms with some big striped bass. Saw some fish quite a few miles away. Ran for a ways to get up to them. By the time we got there, the fish had gone down. Started getting late in the day, and our spotter plane literally was low on fuel and had to go in. You know, at that moment, you're kind of thinking in your head, well, this, this might be over. Your, our eyes in the sky are, you know, they're gone, basically. You know, now we're totally dependent on our own eyes. Right there, 12 o'clock, about three boats. Okay, 12.30, right there. See him rolling the white water? You got him? Yeah. All right, they're swimming. All right, go ahead. I, I got collar, I got a flash. Okay, square up on him now. Square up on him now. The thing that really blew me away about this fishing was everybody on the boat is in the game. Let me know when you got collar. Now the excitement starts. The adrenaline starts going. You're seeing fish. I got them, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock. Start making our way towards them. You know, you're kind of thinking, oh, are they going to stay up? Well, these fish did stay up. Follow cake, okay, get me on them. I got them, I got them. Oh, God, smash it. Follow my stick. So. Good, 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 good. Slow me down, slow me down, slow me down. That's a monster, guys. That is a monster freaking fish. All right, you're about to see a recreation of Jaws. I don't know. I don't know why he didn't zap. Nope, he's not dead. He's going. Say goodbye. One thing that marks a true fisherman is Tyler's not just thinking about that one fish. His efficiency was so good, he was able to actually get a fish, get him on the high flyer, Got fish just popped up off the bow. Have another rig rigged up, ready to go. And we actually got a shot at another fish. Let's stick another one in. We're gonna go free rig. Mike, keep your eye out for them again. They might come right back up like they did earlier. Look at that. Whoop. Oh my God, that's a donkey. Follow my color. Follow. Hit it. Oh, it. Oh, it. Oh, it. Take it down hard. Take it down hard. Hard, hard. Got another dart in another fish. Here we are fighting two fish, two fish over 500 pounds. He is dead than a doornail. He's dead, let's do our dead thing. What do we do with dead fish? Make sure he's dart side down. Get that tarp nice and wet and get. They're electrocuting that fish. That fish dies immediately. No lactic acid, no burnout. They bring that fish into the boat in a matter of minutes. All right, let's get that fish bleeding. It's bled, gutted, and packed with ice. There's no finer product, and that's why Tyler gets out of bed at 3 a.m. every morning. Good job, boys. Good job. You tell me when you want me to go backwards. Right on the bottom, 157 feet down. This is a fishery I've wanted to see ever since I was a kid. What more exciting fishery is there than being out on a 20-foot pulpit with a 20-foot spear chasing one of the biggest animals that roam our oceans? One, two, three. 
Probably the biggest thing that I learned here was the respect and the dedication that these harpoon guys have for this fishery. Coming here and having the opportunity to fish with Tyler was a great experience. Just meeting the guy, just talking to him, even if I never stepped foot on his boat, would have been a great experience. The guy is a wealth of knowledge. The guy is a true waterman, a true fisherman. Yeah.